Welcome to JasperSoft Data to Reporting and Analysis Tutorial. This tutorial shows the basics of how to connect to a Jasper report server to data and perform ad hoc analysis. Three simple steps are covered in this video. The first step is to define your data source in the server. Next, you'll need to create a domain. This is JasperSoft's metadata layer that provides range of features to prepare your data as subject matter data source for use by end users. Once you have a domain, it can be used for ad hoc analysis and creating dashboards. Let's start by creating a data source from the home page menu. Jasper Report Server supports multiple types of data sources, as you can see in the drop list. For this tutorial, we'll use the JDBC connection. The server comes installed with predefined set of drivers. As you can see in the drop list, you can either use one of the pre-installed drivers or if the driver that you need is not part of the pre-installed driver, you can always add your additional driver by clicking on the select driver button and pointing to the location of the driver. For this tutorial, we'll be using a PostgreSQL driver that comes installed with the server. Depending on the database, some amount of connection information has to be provided. For JDBC, that would be host, port, username and password. In this tutorial, we'll be using a foodmart data source that comes pre-installed with the server. Once I have entered the user credentials, the UI provides me a test connection button that allows the server to test whether it can connect to the underlying data source. And once the test connection has been passed, I can save the data source in my local repository. I'll give the data source a name. I can see all the folders based on my security access. I'll save the data source under organizations folder. Once I have created a data source, the next step would be to create a domain on that data source. When I click on create domain, the UI prompts me to choose the underlying data source. We'll use the data source we just created. Since the underlying data source is a schema based data source, the UI is prompting me to select the schema. For this tutorial, we'll use the public schema. When I click on the public schema on the left hand side, I can see all the tables that belong to that schema. I can select certain tables and move them to the selected tables section. For this basic tutorial, we'll be using sales fact table. Domain Designer UI contains a series of tabs that define a series of advanced field selection, calculation and filtering settings. For this basic tutorial, we'll skip them and move to the data presentation section. A presentation tab lets you choose which fields are available for analysis. You can remove them in case you don't need them for analysis. If need be, you can always add them back. A domain also lets you add properties to each field that adds values to the user. A domain designer UI shows the default properties like label, field type, summary calculation, and description always view the additional properties by clicking on the expand button. A domain designer marks every field as measure or dimension based on the metadata property it receives from the data source. Sometimes it may not be correct or appropriate. For example, the customer ID is marked as measure. However, I want that to be a dimension and perform count distinct summary calculation on it. I'll do the same for product ID and store ID. I don't need promotion ID for my analysis, so I can remove that. Once I have defined my domain, I can save the domain in the repository by clicking on save button. I'll give the name to the domain. I can see all the folders based on my security access. For this tutorial, I'll save the domain under the public folder. Once I've defined my domain, the next step is to create an ad hoc view. When I click on create ad hoc view, the UI prompts me to select a data. This is the underlying domain. We'll use the domain we just created. Once I select the domain, the data chooser UI shows me all the fields coming from that domain. I can choose all the fields, move them from source to selected fields, and move to the designer. Here I see all the measures and the dimensions that are marked in my domain designer. Then I select one or more items into columns or row group locations. The results are then displayed. 
in this case aggregated measure values for the entire data set then by dragging more fields into the display you can see more levels of data in this case the data is aggregated by store id you can switch to chart visualization via the toolbar by default the column chart is shown the chart visualizer lets you zoom through the various levels of data the chart type can be selected by clicking on the gear button and clicking on the chart types this shows a palette of all the different types of chart types supported out of the box once you're done you can save the ad hoc view next look at the ad hoc view tutorial to take a deeper look on how to create multi-level visualizations with filtering and advanced calculations you should also take a look at advanced domains tutorial to see how advanced metadata properties such as joins can be defined.